right, let's look at the, the second main point that, that Sean Carroll had was that fine tuning for life would only potentially be relevant if we already accepted naturalism, God could create life under arbitrary physical conditions. Yeah, this is an interesting one. So I think there's two things to say here. Um, the way I'd want to think about the fine tuning argument, um, and I've actually got a paper coming out about this, so you know, we'll link to that if it's out by the time. We'll eventually add that link, yeah. yeah. Um, is we're restricting our focus down to these constants, and we're trying to sort of set up a, a basic a comparison between the two. And so holding that, let's just hold the constants. Then let's just consider changes in these fundamental numbers and then think about naturalism and theism in the same context is kind of just the way you set up an even playing field. And yeah. so there's not really any assumption that God couldn't do this or couldn't do that. It's let's just consider this this one way of comparing the two different uh, uh, the, the two different theories about the the what might be outside the universe or not in the case of natural living. Yeah, it's um, interesting that, just to throw in a quick point here, that Sean Carroll in his intro to raising these points, he actually starts off by saying that he thinks that fine tuning is the best arguments theists have and mm -hmm. that it plays by the rules, as he says. Yeah. He goes on then to say it's a terrible argument anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're trying to deal with what, you know the reasons he gives, but he, he still, he does say that it plays by the rules and I think it's yeah because it's trying to set it up as evaluating these two models and, yeah, it's asking what would you expect, which I think is a very uh, you know, yeah. scientific way of approaching things, rather than I think the other ones he has a problem with this is where you have to rely on some sort of obviously philosophical premise like yeah. you know, a principle of sufficient reason or something like that, uh, which, which you know, he's not as much of a fan of. Um, I think another interesting point to make for that is um, it's trying to say, you know, the, the argument's trying to say if, if you just take naturalism, then the probability of a life permitting universe is extremely small. And um, what he's trying to, to counter that is, if you take theism, the probability that you would have a life permitting universe by very finely tuning these parameters, well, why would God do it that way? And so he's arguing that that's actually quite low as well. And I think the reason why that, that argument sort of fails is um, he, he's, he's trying to raise the possibility of life, of God creating life in any old universe. Um, but the problem is, if, if if God took a life prohibiting universe and then just magic some life into it, um, when that life form tried to look around and understand their environment, it would be completely baffling. Like, you know, there would be lethal x-rays coming straight towards us and then they just sort of swerve around us and disappear out <laughs> yeah. the other side. But no, I mean, it's that sort of thing, you know, if you have a completely lethal universe and then you just, you know, magic life in there, it, it would be that sort of universe. You wouldn't be able to understand what's going on. So there's an argument from uh, which is sort of fleshed out in one of Richard Swinburne's book, books, and I think it's quite nice actually. Just saying, you know, think about what are the basic conditions you would need in order to have two two moral agents, two finite moral agents, who could interact with each other in in a morally significant way. And you you would need there to be there's 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 a part of the world that's under my control, so I have agency, so I I am a, you know I, I can do something. But then there's got to be a sort of part that is that I can influence, but is sort of a public area between us. So we can decide whether we want to build a house or whether we want to build a bomb, precisely because the stuff around us reacts in, in you know, if Practical I put this ways. brick on that brick, it's going to help build a house, it's not going to build a bomb. Yeah. And so, actually, if, if you're thinking that the reason for the universe, if God exists, is that there are moral <clears throat> agents in it, then you would expect a universe which has, the, the environment that they act in has to have some level of predictability. So I think it's not raising a massive, sort of, you know, completely implausible option for the theist. Right, and it, it seems that we don't have to posit it as being necessarily that probable that God would oh, choose yeah. to create life, even because it's up against naturalism, where there would be no kind of selection of mm. favoring life. Sort of like the analogy that uh, you've talked about before, if you're playing poker, and mm. every time you deal, you get four aces or whatever, royal flush. After a while, I would know you're cheating if you're right. dealing that, even though if I just, maybe I just met you, I don't know how often how right. likely you are to lie. Maybe I expected a low prior probability that you would cheat. All right. that goes out the window when you get enough yeah. evidence to the contrary. Yeah, so I mean, in, in, in the end, we are trying to compare two things. And so, you know, if, if naturalism takes a massive hit from fine tuning, th this argument had better give theism a similarly massive hit. And, and it, it's not clear that it does that at all. I mean, these are sort of minor quibbles at, at worst. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, the third point he made was that. Oh, sorry. Can I jump in? Oh, yeah, yeah. Please. There's one other point I want to make about this is that, uh, and I, I, I had a discussion with Sean Carroll on Unbelievable, and um, so there's one reason he specifically can't quite make this argument stick, um, and it has to do with what you actually think the laws of nature are. So if you think that there really are things called electrons and they really have properties and they have causal properties and they interact with each other, then it kind of makes sense to make this sort of argument, right? You could, you could give electrons whatever property you like, but just at the right time, God makes them do this, that, or the other, and they make life, right? Now, it's a weird universe, as we were saying, but sure, possible. That's not Sean's view of what the laws of nature are, as he lays it out in his, his, his books and in his talks. He, his views, it's called the Humean, uh, after David Hume, and the, the idea is that uh, it, it, you have just the stuff of the universe, and the laws of nature just are, or all of they are, is something short and oh, there's a quote here from David Albert I like you know, short and pithy and uh, I wish I could remember it in, in more detail <laughs> but any way we can describe the universe which which captures something interesting in a short amount of information that's a law of nature and the fundamental laws of nature are just the best way to be found like the best system we have of summarizing the way of the universe if that's your view then you cannot say that the universe acts one way and the laws of nature are another way. Right. Because you, you really are just describing models, yeah. and if the model was these, these x-rays swerved around yeah. you, that becomes part of That the is just the laws of nature. And... So there is something, a little bit of a tension here, in, you know, saying the laws of nature could be one way, but God makes the universe another way. Well, only if you have a different view of what the laws of nature really are. Um, and so, you know, that's another problem with this 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 objection is that, that there's an assumption here about the way the universe works, which actually Sean doesn't make. There's also an interesting historical analysis that, that could be made in terms of science itself arising in large part by, by theists who expected God to have set up an orderly universe and mm -hmm. were looking for law-based yeah. aspects. So from, at least from a Christian standpoint, I'm not at all surprised God would set up an orderly nature, a rational mind behind it, and, and you know the notion of creating creatures that would have dominion and be able to learn and study and interact with nature makes, makes perfect sense to me from that standpoint. Yeah, I mean, the, the reason why so many of those early you know, scientists who, it wasn't at all clear that if we look closely at nature, we'll find these laws that describe in you know, such general laws, yeah. the reason why they went hunting for them. And, you know, it, it, it wasn't really clear what where to look to start with. So there's stories about uh, one of the early pioneers of science, Francis Bacon, who is sort of an average scientist and a good philosopher of science. He had some good yeah. ideas about what to do, but not really good scientific. But I think, I think I'm right in saying the way he actually died was he caught pneumonia, but what the, he got it, he was trying to stuff uh, a chicken carcass with snow to see whether it would uh, preserve I've heard that it. story, I forgot yeah. who that was. <laughs> so, uh, the, so clearly if you're doing that, you're floundering around trying to work out, yeah. like you're not really, like you, if you're trying to head towards the fundamental laws, you just wandered <laughs> off to the side. I mean, there's there's an awful lot of time there where it's not clear whether there are these fundamental laws, which was why there's yeah. such a relief that Newton, Isaac Newton's grain, uh, uh, gravestone says something on the lines of, you know, all of nature was in darkness. It, it rhymes, I can't remember the rhyme. But all of nature was in darkness, and then God said, let there be Newton, and there was light. It's something like that. So the, the sort of relief, oh, there is, you can actually do this. There are these laws of nature, was, was something that was not clear. But the, the, the people who went after in the scientific revolution were the ones who thought that a, a, a God had created a rational universe.